Good, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Before, before we get into uh, our official start, uh, I want to warn everybody that because of a uh, so my uh, inability to properly type a, a note, uh, the uh, order of worship got knocked off a little bit. So uh, we'll, we'll be following what's on the on the overheads. Uh, if if you look at the order of worship, you get uh, the song that says the the invitation song is actually the song that's going to be before communion. So uh, 687, "Tis so sweet to, to trust in Jesus" is going to be the invitation song. So don't, please don't get too confused. I'll try not to get too confused. So that takes care of that, of that particular uh, administrative uh, item. Next thing I want to, to say is uh, on the 6th of October, we had a special ma makeup for, for the budget, and I want to thank you on behalf of the elders for your response to that. The, uh, the extra that we got that day is going to go a long way to taking care of the, the backlog on some of the bills. So uh, thank you very much. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. And uh, there'll be more on, on this uh, later as far as the status of that. But uh, suffice it to say that, that the elders are very thankful for your generosity in helping to, to take care of a, our shortfall of, over the past few, few months. So thank you very much. And please accept our thanks. So let's, let's begin on a happy note. If you want to stand on this, you can. If you don't want to stand, that's fine too. I, I will not go doing cartwheels down the aisle, so. <laughs> but, so let's so, sing this song and realize the joy that we should have. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts on full life lost before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and hand reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, love binds man to man. Joy Singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward, 
in the triumph song of life. Be seated, please, if you haven't. After we'll sing this song, You Are My All in All, and then we'll have our opening prayer. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, Worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, worthy is your Buenos días, hermanos. El Señor les bendiga. Vamos a dirigirnos a Dios en oración en esta mañana. Bendito Padre que mueras en el cielo, en la tierra y en todo lugar. Padre bendito, venimos a ti, Señor, en esta mañana. Muy agradecidos contigo, Padre, por esta oportunidad que nos das en este tu día, Señor. De estar aquí reunidos como iglesia, Señor, para alabar y glorificar tu santo nombre. Padre bendito, en estos momentos te pedimos... Por cada uno de los que estamos aquí presentes, Señor, que abra nuestra mente, nuestro corazón, Señor, para recibir tu palabra, Padre bendito. Así mismo, Padre, te pedimos por los enfermos. Tú sabes que hay enfermos en tu, en tu congregación, Padre bendito. Te pedimos por ellos, que los bendigas. Que bendigas las medicinas que están tomando, Señor, para que les dé su alivio, Padre. Padre, te pedimos también por los soldados que cuidan de esta nación, Señor, que tú les bendigas donde quiera que se encuentren, Señor. Y que al regresar a sus hogares, los regreses con bien, Padre. Por el hermano que trae el mensaje en esta mañana, Señor, también te pedimos por él que lo bendigas. Y a nosotros, Señor, te pedimos que nos ayudes a seguir adelante en tu camino, que perdone las faltas que hemos tenido delante de ti. En el bendito nombre de ti, te lo pedimos, nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Amén. Let us continue our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this gorgeous weather. Thank you for enriching our lives. Thank you for counting us as, as your own. Thank you for allowing us to call your father and, and letting us be your sons and daughters. Oh, Father, we see your, your handiwork on our lives from beginning to end. And Father, we, we pray for this congregation, oh Lord. Help build us up, help bring new families and, and new faces. Father, we, we ask for, for wisdom and guidance for our elders and, and steadfast for our, our deacons. Father, bless them as they try to lead this flock. And Father, help us to, to shine, help us to, to be Christ-like as we enter this world and, and let us be an example to the people around us. Help us find the words to, to touch that certain someone to lead them to Christ. And Father, we, we pray for all the, the missionaries around the world. Bless their tongues and, and comfort them and protect them. Their work is so important, O oh Lord. And Father, we, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are being persecuted or dealing with disease. Please comfort them and strengthen them. Show them that you are the great comforter. And Father, we do pray for this nation. Help us to get back to the, to the way we were, following your, your, your guidance and your laws. And, your... and Father, we thank you so much for everything you've done for us. 
Thank you for allowing us to gather together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise him all day long. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me, so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way, take hold of it today. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. This next song will be the song before our Lord's Supper. Uh, please bear with me at the end. The last portion of this song is not what you normally sing. Just follow it up here. I think you will get the message that I want to send. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Good morning. For the communion, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians, began with verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do, and remember of me. Pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this privilege and this opportunity. And we can come together and remember your sacrifice. We appreciate, we appreciate your kindness. We appreciate all the things you've done for us. We appreciate more than we can express. We thank you for this privilege that we can encourage each other as we do this in your name. Thank you so much for this privilege. In your name we pray, amen. Verse 25, after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for this privilege that we can remember and think of your sacrifice. This is so precious. We pray that each and every one here this morning realize how precious this is. And we thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together and encourage each other and we pray for those that are not able to be here to partake of the Lord's Supper. We pray that you continue to bless us. We continue in this service. Help us to remember this great gift. In your name we pray, amen.
First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege of returning to you a portion of that you've given us. And we pray that this we give will be using will be used in a manner that's pleasing to you. And we pray for those that may have a mind to be here to give, help them with their needs. We thank you so much for all you've given us. We thank you so much for giving us this opportunity that we can return to you a portion that you've given us. We pray that you bless us that we may have more to give. We pray that you continue to bless us. We continue in our service this morning. We thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Sometimes I <clears throat> kind of overdo it on the songs. <clears throat> We're part of the family that's been born again. Part of a family whose love knows the wind for Jesus has saved. And made us his own. Now we're part of a family that's on its way home. And sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together. Heartaches and sorrow. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be. And we're all here to heaven. God's family. The brother meets sorrow. We all feel his grief. Pass through the valley, we all feel relief together in sunshine, together in rain, together in victory through his precious name. And sometimes we laugh. Together, sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will. 
will be when we all get to heaven, God's family, and though some go before us, we'll all meet again just inside the city as we enter in there'll be no more parting with jesus will be together forever god's family and sometimes we laugh together Sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. Sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. Would you stand for the reading of the word, please? Good morning, Eastwood. Today's reading will be Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For sincerely, for a righteous man will one die, yet, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love tor towards us in, the, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> How, have you ever wished that you could start your life over? Just, you know, have a, a new beginning, something fresh? Typically, we have some uncertainty in our lives as we journey through life. So I ask, where are you now? Are you struggling with despair, doubt, perhaps some unhappiness? Or are you on the upward road that gives abundant life now and you're looking forward to that heavenly home to come? Or perhaps you don't know. Sometimes you're happy and life is great, but other times there's so much uncertainty about your life and your relationship with God. Well, here's my question. If something should happen to you this very day that would end your life on this earth, would you go to heaven or would you not? Well, if you answered no, then you have, should have at least, a special interest in the verses that we're going to be looking at today. If you answered yes, then you should get some extra assurance and encouragement at the verses that we're going to be examining today. Because we want to look at verses that will help us in our efforts to serve God and in our attitude toward life. The first verse we look at is Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of salvation for each and every one of us. We learn here the importance of the written word, the importance of our Bibles. It is the word that gives us the power to transform us and guide our lives. The last statistic I looked at, that on average, every house has five Bibles in it. 
Now, that's skewed because there are some people that don't have any Bibles at all, which means that some of us have got a lot more, and I'm one of those that's got several, and I know many of you do as well. There's not just a book to be laying on the shelf. We need to understand that it's the Word of God. And our salvation comes from this book, from this Bible. Bible means book. And yours probably has something on it that says Holy Bible. That means holy book. It's the Word of God. It's not a creed book or some other individual revelation. We spoke this morning in our Bible class about people who sometimes say, Oh, God talked to me last night. or I had No, He didn't. He talked to you if you read your Bible. And all of us could and should and need to be reading our Bible. Do you believe the Bible is your only roadway to heaven? That it needs to be important to you, you need to be reading it. Gospel means good news. The good news is revealed to us here. But there's also some bad news, as we're going to see in this next verse. And that is, some of us, all of us, me and you, have sinned. Now, we typically don't like to think of ourselves in those terms, but may I just flat out tell you, you're a sinner. And I'm not picking on you because I'm a sinner as well, perhaps greater than you. Since we've all sinned, we need to pay attention to what God says and what this next verse tells us in Romans 5. And that is that you and I, live in sin. We have an experience of a life that includes sin. And as a result of that, then the pathway of sin is death. So since I don't want to be on that pathway, I want to be on the pathway to life, not to death, then I need to do something about it. If you were traveling down the road and you wanted to go to a certain place, And you saw a fork in the road or a T where you had to make a turn. And there was a sign, and that sign told you which way to go to go to your destination. Would you go that way? Of course you would. You're not stupid. The sign says go this way to where you want to go, you know, your destination. And it could be the grocery grocery store, ice cream shop, or another town, grandma's house, whatever. You want to go there. That's the way you would go. Well, all of us have sinned. We turned the wrong way. And what we need to do is turn toward God. Do you remember Adam and Eve's story where they ate of the forbidden fruit? The premise was God says you can eat of every fruit off of every tree in the orchard in the garden except one. And if you eat from that tree, then you're going to be separated from me. Now, the translation is usually death, and I contend that's not a good translation. It means separated from God. I had a man working for me one time in one of the businesses that we had. He had a tr- terrible problem with drug addiction. Came to me one day and says, can I get off early? He says, I got another NA meeting to go to. I said, another one? He said, yeah, I've already been to three. He was struggling. He was trying to stay clean. He told me when he was 14 years old, when he was 14 years old, his mother packed a suitcase for him, put him in the car with a suitcase, drove him to the highway that was down the road, and put him out. 14 years old. That's how much he had ruined his life. He had ruined their life. He was incorrigible. Nothing they did helped. Everything was spiraling downward. That's what God is saying to Adam and Eve. You disobey me and you separate yourself from me. Now, this is not why we started dying physically because they ate of the fruit. No, that's sin. I think our bodies were not created to be eternal. To me, it seems pretty obvious. They they can't last forever. They wear out. They break. I mean, we've got so many artificial joints and points and things like that around. You know, No, this body was not intended to last forever. It's a physical body. 
When God says, if you eat of this tree, you'll be separated from me. Now, how do you think that mother felt when she put her 14-year-old boy on the street with a suitcase? She wasn't happy. She was heartbroken. God's heartbroken when we sin. And we do. Today our sins will still separate us from the blessings of God in this life and will result in eternal separation from God. Since we've all sinned, this is terrible news. None of us want this to happen to us. And now the next passage tells us how God turned this around with good news. He says, while we were still sinners, he didn't say, clean up, and then you can come back. He said, while you were still sinners, Jesus died for you. Jesus Christ suffered the most cruel death that was known to happen on this earth, the crucifixion. And before that, he was flogged, and many times that takes the life of the, of the prisoner. Jesus died for you. You didn't deserve it, and he didn't deserve it, but he died for you. Outside of Christ and a right relationship with God, we're not going to have any peace. We're not going to have any salvation. So that's why we need to understand what Jesus did for us. And what we need to understand that his, the giving of his life should have some significance. And in the text that was read a moment ago, Perhaps you might die for a good person. Maybe. But would you die for a wicked one? Would you die for one that wouldn't listen to God at any time, wouldn't live their life according to God's will? Would you die for that person? Jesus died for me in that situation. If you put your faith and your trust in him, you'll have the joy and the peace that money cannot buy. What is it people want today? They want to be happy. They want joy. They want peace. They want to have a wonderful life. You're not going to get that in the material goods that we chase. I don't care how expensive your car is, your shoes, your clothes, how big your house is. You're only going to find that when you have a relationship with God. So the question is, where am I? Salvation is an important step. And we need to believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died for us. And our faith leads us to the next step that we're told in Romans chapter 6. Don't you know? You know, that, that's, that to me is a statement he's saying, don't you know? It's, it's the obvious don't you know that all of us have been baptized to Christ and put on Christ? And the purpose is, is that we might be in Christ and that we may have a new life. He's not revealing to them something new. He's saying, you already know this. He's telling them that the newness of life that you have, that you're searching for, is connected to your obedience to Christ and that obedience includes immersion. It includes baptism. Baptism is confusing to many people. Many misunderstand it. But it's simply a simple act of obedience that represents the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what's exciting, it includes me and my death to, to sin and my burial to the world and my resurrection to Christ. It's not just a picture of Jesus. It's a picture of the people who obey Jesus. You become a part of him. We bury the dead in a watery grave of baptism. There's a baptistry right back here, and it's filled with water. It's not magical water. It's water that came out of the tap that has got a little extra chlorine added to it, like you might put in your swimming pool. There's nothing magical about that water. It's God that makes the difference. It's your faith and your obedience to Him. 
that is where we come in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you look in this baptistry and you're not going to see any blood. All you're going to see is water. And since this is West Texas, maybe a little dust. But when you are buried in that watery grave of baptism, you come in contact with the dead Savior and His shed blood, and that blood cleanses you. Now, when you go down and come up, you're not going to look any different except you're going to be wet. But you are going to be different in your relationship with God because your faith and obedience to Jesus Christ, God has taken away your sins. Faith starts the process. Baptism completes it. This gives us our next text, Romans chapter 7. You died to the law, he says. Now what law is he talking about? He's writing to Jewish Christians. And he's telling them, you died to the Mosaical law. You no longer follow the Mosaical law. You no longer depend on the Mosaical law for your relationship with God. You died to that law. But you've been raised from the dead as a new creature and in a new law and in a new relationship. You are now not a Jew, not an Israelite. You're a disciple of Christ. You're a follower of Jesus. Or as it later came to be said, you're a Christian. How did this happen? Because God gave a message of good news about his salvation he had provided and we believed and followed it. That's how it happens. This new law is the law of Christ. Now, when we have new laws, sometimes there are big changes. And sometimes there are changes that aren't so big. We know that uh, in our place here, we have speed limits. Many years ago, I was driving on an interstate except it wasn't called an interstate, it had just been built. And the speed limit was still 60 miles an hour. Well, my wife was ill and I was trying to get home very quickly and I was driving more than 60 miles an hour. The speedometer on my old Carmen gear was broken and so I didn't really know how fast I was broken, but when I was in court, and the attorney asked me if I knew I was speeding, and I said, yes. And he said, well, how did you know? I said, because I just passed a Greyhound bus. <laughs> what I didn't know is the Greyhound bus was driving the speed limit because there was a highway patrolman right in front of him. I passed him, too. Now that law has changed. And you go, can go on that same strip of land and drive whatever it is, probably 75, 80 miles an hour, and the highway patrolman will not give you a ticket. But I got a ticket then. Why? The law had changed. And sometimes the laws change a, a different direction. But, but we know that when the law of Moses was taken away, one of the things that it was taken away were all the sacrifices that happened repeatedly, continuously, sacrifice after sacrifice, and every year a special sacrifice for my sins. And now there's but one sacrifice, and it's been made by Jesus Christ. And we no longer make animal sacrifices. That's just one of the big things that has happened. And he says... You're now in a new relationship with God because of your service and obedience to Jesus Christ. We are in the body of Christ. Our sins are taken away. We have a new law, and, and when we are saved, God just automatically adds us to his family. The text says in Acts chapter 2, he adds to the saved, the group of the saved. The word ecclesia is translated church in most of our Bibles. It means assembly or gathering. So God puts us in his assembly, in his gathering, in his group. It's 
his church. There is but one church, as we talked about last Sunday. You don't have to join a denomination. No, when you're saved, God puts you in his body, puts you in his church. We belong to Jesus Christ because he is the head, and we're members of that body. Paul talks about some of you are an eye, an ear, whatever you are. We all have a part. We have a, a gift. We have a role. We work for the glory of God. We're not equal in everything that we do and all of our talents, but we're all a part of the body. And so it is that you are a part of the body of Jesus Christ when he adds you to that body. We belong to Christ as new creatures, married to him. The church is the bride. But the Bible talks about the church being the bride, and we are a part of that. We're a part of his church, his body, his bride. All of these are illustrations that are trying to get us to understand the close relationship we now have with God. Because that's what he wanted, that's what he's offered, that's what he's provided. And in your faith and obedience, you've accepted it, you're a part of it. We belong to him, we wear his name, we honor him by the way that we live. We're saved to bear fruit. We're dedicated to live our lives to his will. Our desire is to serve. Not play games or go through rituals. Our desire is to serve him. And so the question comes, are you serving him? Are you? I cannot answer that for you. I have, you have to answer that for yourself. Are you bearing fruit for Jesus Christ? Could someone else see that fruit? Can God see that fruit? What's happening in your life that glorifies God? Romans chapter 6. He tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Well, you've read your Bible enough. You knew that. That's not anything new to you. You understand that. But understand it intellectually and taking it into ourselves emotionally and living our lives that way sometimes can be very different. And so we have to ask ourselves about that fruit and about how we're living and about what we're doing. Some make the decision to follow Christ a very difficult one. It's actually a simple choice. A choice between, between two roads. One that leads to eternal life and the other one does not. Now, if you're driving down the road and you know where you're going and you see a sign that tells you which direction to go, you're going to make the right choice. But when it comes to our spirituality, sometimes that's more difficult because the life that we travel is one of pleasure and sin and indulgence. And let me continue with the road metaphor illustration let's say you're driving down the road and let's say you're going about 75 miles an hour and the road you're on you kind of curves a little bit and as it curves you see it gets even smoother you've been getting a little road noise back there but man if i turn there it looks it looks like that's going to be smooth and then the road to the other direction has a sign that says god heaven this way but it looks like it's rough and full of potholes and bumps. And you think, well, I'm not sure I will drive on that bumpy road. Because serving Christ in this, by comparison to the pleasures of this world, it's not always a choice people want to make. People do not want to be Christians because they want to live the life of pleasure and self-indulgence. They want to live a life of sin. So the question becomes ours. It's our choice. One we deserve, the road to hell. The other is a gift from the Savior. He wants us to give us eternal life. He simply asks us to obey him. The conclusion of the, is, will we choose the road of God? Will we choose the road to life? Will we choose the road to heaven? 
Now, I don't know. Perhaps you've made that choice already, and if so, I just encourage you to be renewed in your determination to bear fruit for God. But if you've never made that decision, you've never said you wanted to be a Christian, you never said you wanted to follow Christ, you've never said you believe in Jesus as the Son of God and want to be born again, you need to make that decision. Everyone here would encourage you to make that decision. We invite you to come and, and let us help you and assist you. Immerse today to have your sins washed away. If you're willing to come, we invite you to come now while we stand and sing this hymn. Let us sing. Tis so sweet to, to trust, trust in Jesus, <coughs> just to take Him at His word, just to rest <coughs> upon His promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Trying to figure that out. Um, I just wanted you to know, in case you haven't already recognized it, that my wonderful daughter-in-law, Sonia, is here. She brought Greg with him. And we have our, our three great, grand, wonderful grandchildren. I said great in the sense of their being great, not that they are that. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> if you haven't met them, uh, I hope that you will. It's the intention that Greg's going to be speaking next Sunday, Lord willing. I encourage you to come and, and hear Greg at that time. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. On behalf of Greg and Glenna Bunn, thank you all for, for taking some of the stuff that's on the back table. Some of it's crystal, some of it's glass. But it's for you guys to enjoy on behalf of Teresa Dalkey, who's now in a, in a nursing home and not doing very well. So please remember her and keep the family in your prayers at the same time. And uh, there's still a few more things back there. Don't everybody run back at once. I want to, first of all, tell you how sad I am. No one has taken me up on the potatoes that I offered y'all to come eat with me. What's going on with that? Nobody's been over to my house for a potato dinner, but that's all right. That just means I have more potatoes. All the potatoes are gone, by the way, so thank you also for that, for taking all that and, and being able to use it in a good way. So we're, we're glad that we can do things like that, and we thank whoever donated it to help us be able to do stuff like that. And that also reaches out to the community and to others when you're giving it to your neighbors and your friends. I took some to my coworkers and it all went well. Everybody was appreciative. So thank y'all for everything.
And if, if one more thing, if you missed Mike's announcement before you be, if y'all weren't here when Mike did his announcement, as the eldership, as the leaders, we want to thank y'all for the special contribution that was given a couple of weeks ago. Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, we come before you this time, heavenly Father, and we thank you first of all, Father, for allowing us to come here together, Father, to to be able to worship with each other, heavenly Father, and to and to praise you, heavenly Father. And we thank you, Father, for visitors that, and guests that you have brought our way, heavenly Father. And we pray that you continue to help us to to let our light shine and to be good examples of you, Father, among our friends, co-workers, neighbors, and all, heavenly Father. Help us to be a good example. We thank you, Father, for the service that we had this morning. We ask you to continue to be with us this week, Heavenly Father, and, and help us to let our light shine among everyone. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As, as we sing this last song, it's just a reminder of what we've already talked about, already sung about. It's because of the debt that was paid by Jesus. Let's stand and sing this final song before we're dismissed. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. One day he's coming back for me to live with him eternally. Won't it be glory to see him on that day? I then will sing a brand new song Amazing grace, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Have a blessed week.